What's up Mets fans? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are once again talking about the New York Mets and their approach to the MLB offseason, specifically how they're going to evaluate their pending free agents. And as we've discussed in a couple of videos already on the channel, which I will have them in the description down below as always, the Mets have a lot of big name free agents set to hit the market. So now here the question lies for the guy in the hat right here, Michael Conforto. Should the New York Mets in fact re-sign Michael to a qualifying offer, an entirely new contract? What is the interest from the Mets side of things to get a deal done on one of these two things? What is Conforto's interest in trying to get a deal done and actually stay in Queens and not hit the market? Is he going to hit the market? What is the best route for the Mets? What is the best route for Conforto? And what is the most likely scenario to happen here? That is what we will be breaking down in today's video, guys. So as always, make sure you stay all the way till the end of it. Follow the deets and all my thoughts on Michael Conforto's uncertain future with the Mets. And guys, as always, if you ended up enjoying this kind of Mets content and you want to see more great Mets content like this, please do not hesitate from smashing that like and subscribe on sharing this video with your friends, put on the notification bell, all those great things. Thank you so much for the continued support folks we're going to be doing so much content in the offseason regarding all things Mets so make sure to join the Wardy NYM gang if you haven't already but enough of me talking let's jump right into today's video now already through seven MLB seasons 28 year old right fielder Michael Conforto has been a stronghold in the Mets core group for quite a while now Conforto faced numerous obstacles unfortunately this year and it couldn't have came out a worse time for the penny for agent however from entering 2021 without a contract extension, to which his teammate Francisco Lindor was gifted one at $341 million over a decade, to having continuous thoughts of his future because of this, to suffering a hamstring injury sideline Conforto five weeks, all these factors helped combine into the frustration that was his 2021 season. But no less, Conforto has been a rather consistent factor in the Mets offense throughout his career, gaining the party started with not one but two home runs to make his MLB debut in the 2015 World Series, a balanced plate approach that spreads the ball all over between his power and contact makeup. The Swiss swing, many can argue in the sport, now is set to confront the uncertainty that is ahead this MLB season. All right, Mets fans, let's start off with the fact that if you know me, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know Michael Conforto is my favorite player, and he has been on the Mets since he arrived in Queens back in 2015. But with all those things being said, and as much as I truly do appreciate Michael, not just as a player, as a person, I'm putting all those biases aside and I'm focusing on why exactly I feel that way, which is the numbers. The numbers break down the impact and the potential he will have for the Mets or wherever he potentially lands in for agency, right? And trust me, I know he had a terrible 2021. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But it's very important to look at why exactly did Michael have a down 2021 as we talked about with the injury, with the looming for agency, all those things going on. That's definitely a recipe for a lack of success, but the injury was a huge driving force here. Michael Conforto had a slow start to the 2021 season, then was gaining a bit of a groove, buying right around 250 up until his injury in the month of May. He got hurt towards the end of May, and that was out five weeks. And we came back in June and July. He was terrible. Offensively, he just was little to no impact at all. He had a huge slow start coming back from injury. Again, that's a long thing to happen and for a nagging hamstring. Something tells me that he wasn't necessarily 100% for sure coming back from his injury because it seemed like it was nagging a bit. Same thing with other guys like Jeff McNeil, etc. But when you look at him down the stretch in the season, once he actually was looking like his best was in August. He had his best month in August, batting right around 268, which was awesome to see. A 388 on base percentage, which is great. And an 876 OPS. That's by far the highest OPS he's had in a month all season long. That's very Michael Conforto slash on and he did similar in September to this point with a 263 average, a 349 on base, and a 749 OPS at the time of recording this. Yes, I know that the slugging is down here, and that's not just for Michael. That's across the board with all Mets this season. I don't know if it's a systematic problem that's going to be changing next year. I hope it is because no one was hitting the home run ball consistently other than Pete Alonso and then Francisco Lindor at times who cracked 20 bombs this year. But then you had your other home run leaders for the majority that were Jonathan Villar and Kevin Pillar, your normal bench guys, right? So it's important to look at the slugging and knowing that there was a huge problem across the board with all these Mets with a lot of guys getting hurt and there's no doubt in my mind that Michael Conforto was not hurt this season that he would for sure have better more uh, respectable numbers and I don't think there would be nearly as much uncertainty with wanting to bring him back or not heading into now the offseason and free agency but when you're looking further here outside of him doing great when it comes to running as a scoring position, how has he done in his career as a hitter so far? And how is this going to help Conforto when it comes to hanging the market and knowing that he's more than likely going to bounce back next season and beyond? Well, Michael, to this point, has three seasons with at least 27 home runs, has a season just shy of 70 bombs, and he was in the 80-plus uh, pardon me, RBIs, and then he was in the set 80-plus RBI category for back-to-back -back seasons in 2018-2019. His best statistical season offensively came in 2019 with 33 three bombs, 92 RBIs, and 856 OPS. That's a Michael Conforto that we all fell in love with, knowing that he was getting that swing down, actually hitting lefties as well, not being taken out, and not being able to handle lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchups. He was really spraying the 
the field and showing his peak and he continued that into a dominant 2020 season the short campaign he was arguably the Mets best hitter outside of someone like Dom Smith but now here we are it's 2021 and with all the excuses and the reasonings as to why Michael Conforto had a down season he still had a down season and that is for, for certain going to be a factor in his future with the Mets and how they evaluate him but what needs to be also acknowledged here is more than anything it's not just the Mets potential willingness on wanting to bring him back and what should they I believe that they should I'll get into that in a second but it's the fact that who's going to come in as president of baseball operations GM all that fun stuff that is going to be by far the most significant say so while I've seen numerous reports out right now over the past month or so to indicate that the Mets would like to give Michael at least the qualifying offer and hope that he takes it which from other reports are indicating that no he won't take it he's looking for a bigger contract like what he was hoping for heading into the season on an extension if say the Mets hire one guy to come in as GM and he say loves Michael Conforto okay maybe they hire another guy that has a completely different output like a uh, viewpoint we simply don't know and that's going to be a huge driving force and that's why this is all that more uncertain but still at this point the reports have indicated if they stay true the Mets would like to at least give the qualifying offer to Michael and it makes perfect sense for the Mets side things to bet on him for another year and see what happens and it makes perfect sense for Michael as well to bank on himself and hopefully have a great 2022 and get more in free agency then hopefully with the Mets than what he would have heading into this season uh after the season I should say because after this year it's unlikely that Conforto is going to get more than say 100 million it's potential there are a lot of teams that are deemed that they're going to view Conforto potentially not on 2021 but as a whole as they should right and the Mets should do the same but Conforto going into the season on extension was looking at an assumed 170 plus million dollar contract pushing north of 200 so you're telling me Michael only has one shot to get this big payday in his career right does he want to bet on himself now and go to free agency this year which Scott Boris of course is going to push as his agent unfortunately he's not in the qualifying offers he wants to get the bag for whoever his clients are but are they going to go for that big contract this year while Michael had a down year and get less money more than likely or are you going to bet on yourself potentially and go into next season have a dominant year hopefully have a Michael Conforto normal year as long as you stay healthy and get the contract to pushing upwards of 200 million that is something that Michael's heavily weighing I'm sure and will be weighing as these dis decisions and negotiations overall need to be had but no less the Mets should they in fact resign him yes I believe that they should I think there's so much upside with Michael Conforto still I think he has yet to hit that peak in his career and while he's not necessarily the superstar that a lot of Mets fans were hoping for when he originally came into Queens he's still a very serviceable a reliable right fielder for this team that has a great bat and when he's rolling he spreads the field and that's something that a lot of guys on the Mets have not been able to do so Michael I would not put stock into his anomaly of the year he has proven that once he can really heal up and get back in the groove of things from his injury he can be the Michael Conforto of old and I do expect those slugging numbers to go up next season and beyond as well again there was just a huge problem with the Mets overall this season not just Conforto with not being able to hit the home run ball besides Pete Alonso and the others that we mentioned already but going now into the offseason the Mets qualifying offer Conforto probably won't take it from what many believe and that's very unfortunate but still the Mets are going to have a scenario where they let Michael Conforto walk then they absolutely must not just for the team but for the fans as well knowing that we're going to go into 2022 with a mindset that yes we're trying to win now and get back in that rhythm what we were supposed to be having this season that fell short if you get rid of Michael you need to make sure that you have a replacement for Conforto in right field overall that is either the same if not better and has more upside going forward with this core group over the next five years or so three to five years right so if you don't do that, then in my opinion, it's a huge downfall and you're going to give up Michael Conforto, who's bound to thrive with an opposing team and you're risking him being afraid and potentially staying in the division sign with the team. So all those factors go in. The Mets need to be smart here. I'm confident that they will make the right decision. But as we have talked about before and as that has been reported, the Mets may very well find themselves in a situation with new new uh, president of baseball operations, new GM making rash decisions that are going to upset some fans, parting ways with guys that we have fell in love with, been attached to for numerous years that have been really fun to watch and have been great personalities on the club Michael Conforto might be at the tippy top of that list which would be unfortunate for me as a Michael Conforto fan but again I am always in favor more than anything of what is best for the Mets going forward so I really think that you should not give up on him too soon but ultimately it's out of my hands and it's out of really the Mets hands right now until they get those hires in for president baseball operations and GM so it's gonna be very interesting folks but as always let me know all your thoughts in the comments below guys how do you feel about this Michael Conforto situation do you believe 
that he should be resigned on say a qualifying offer or an even bigger deal do you think the Mets would actually do that from what I believe I don't think that they would I don't think that Michael will get a George Springer type contract this offseason for the Mets it just doesn't feel likely from what we're seeing again anything can change anything can happen right but if you're in favor or against Michael staying with the Mets what you think is likely unlikely let me know it all in the comments below folks as always if you ended up enjoying this kind of Mets content and you want to see more great Mets content like this a lot more videos like this as well breaking down other pending for agents a lot of content so much content coming in the offseason please do not hesitate from smashing that like and subscribe button again smashing that uh smashing those buttons sharing this with your friends on the notification bell all those great things thank you so much again for the continued support it really does mean the world to me folks so much has come on the channel but no less i really want to know what your thoughts are on michael conforto and his uncertain future so thank you again guys let me know it all and of course let's go mets baby